Welcome back to Here and Now, everyone. We are about to go on a fossil finding tour, and I'm with Rod Taylor, the lead science interpreter. And Rod, tell me a little bit about a lead science interpreter. What do you do? Well, my work here at Manuals River is we educate the public about what we do on the river. We look at geology, paleontology, ecology, but we also do educational programming for kids based around what we actually find on the river. Okay. So essentially, it's about interpretation and education. What are you going to show me? We're going to go for a little stroll down on the river. We're aiming towards one of our fossil sites on the river where we have 500 million year old trilobites. All right, let's go. Well, I grew up about a kilometer down the road from here. Yeah. And again, um, large family, spent a lot of time on the river, swimming yeah. and fishing yeah. and hunting and hiking and playing hockey in the winters. And I moved to Europe to do my graduate studies. And as it turns out, I actually studied fossil arthropods. So yeah. I got a PhD in the Netherlands and I worked in the University of Cambridge in the UK. And after being over there for nearly 20 years, I realized I'd, I'd been away too long. Well, you're a lucky man. Besides uh, fossils, you get to be in the outdoors all the time. I certainly do. We get out here most days with student groups and I mean, this, this is my office. Life doesn't get any better than this. Lovely. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful here. This area represents a, a rock sequence that's approximately 500 million years old and the sediments, it actually represents a seafloor at that time, mm -hmm. relatively shallow water, so there was a very large community of animals that lived there. Okay, so this was actually the bottom of the ocean. This was the bottom of a shallow ocean. It yeah. wasn't deep water, so we've got a lot of fossil trilobites in here as well as some other shelly organisms, and it's a really easy place to come and actually find fossils. Now, before we go in and have a look, we do want to talk about, you know, about, about fossils and the law. Um, what about that? I mean, if, if somebody comes along here and picks up a fossil, uh, that's not encouraged, right? Coming along here and picking up a fossil from the loose scree that we see, the loose rock that's fallen down, is absolutely fine. We're mm -hmm. perfectly happy with that. What we encourage people to do is instead of taking that and putting it in their pocket and bringing it home, take a picture of it and enjoy it and show it to your kids and your friends. Yeah. Because essentially, people have been coming here since the 1870s collecting material some coming in and actually damaging the rock face, some yeah. people taking fossils away with them. So the government passed legislation making it illegal to either dig into the rock wall, again, to protect it, yeah. and also to prevent people from taking material away, so it's no longer allowed to take fossils away as well. Let's have a dig through and see what we can find. Okay. You can probably see fairly easily, a lot of this rock splits much more easily than others. This little critter that we see here that oh, has like a little spot. bump in the middle, yeah. that is the head of a tiny trilobite oh, really? called an agnostid. Oh, wow. They only got to about a centimeter long in total size, and this is one half of the shell. Okay. So again, without actually knowing what you're looking for, you wouldn't really recognize that. But we spend so much time down here, these things jump out so at us. So 500 million years old? That animal crawled, actually probably swam here in the shallow seas about 500 million years ago. Wow. Yeah. With a trilobite, the main trunk of the body was made up of segments. There's a central line, and we can see a trace of that here. Yeah. And there are lines coming off on the side. Those are part of the lateral lobes, which actually would have protected the legs underneath the animal. Okay. So this was an animal probably about six centimeters wide. It probably would have been about 12 to 13 centimeters long. Right. So that would have been fairly large by the standards in this section, but compared to some of the material on the river, we have specimens here more than 30 centimeters long. So he probably wasn't that big, but it's a nice little find in this section. So it's like an ancient relative of the lobster or the crab or something like that. An ancient sort of third cousin removed. Yeah. 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 Definitely related to the, to the modern crustaceans. Cool but extinct for 250 million years, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> See that, again, that represents a part of the head of one of the larger trilobites. So oh. this curve, this is actually what we call the, a part of the free cheek. And when these animals molted, the yeah. sides of the head actually popped off and the center of the head would tip forward or backward depending on the species and the animal will crawl out of the hole left okay, behind. Okay. And this curve on the inside edge was where this would have rested up against the eye of the animal. Okay. And if this was complete, there would be a spine going straight back from here. That's so this represents the side of the head. That probably would have been at least 15 centimeters, and probably longer again, yeah, probably yeah. closer to 20 centimeters. Yeah. So he would have been a fairly large critter. Nature is essential to all of us. We can't survive without what we see here. I mean, aesthetically, it's beautiful, but the river itself provides drinking water, it provides food, it provides animals. It's, it's a big part of what we are. At the same time, there's a lot of aesthetic value here. There's historical importance because we can discover things about the Earth's past and the history of life. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, and it's essential, really. 